JBN, we keep you informed. Shower man killed. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF said an unknown gunman shot and killed a security officer from Old Oak Road, Kingston 5 in his community on Wednesday, May 29. The deceased is 57-year-old Anthony Liao, otherwise called Showerman, based on his strong support for the Jamaica Labour Party. He was an employee at the party's headquarters on Belmont Road. Reports from the Halfway Tree Police are that about 1 p.m., Leo was at a cook shop when he was pounced on by men traveling on a motorcycle. One of the men opened fire, eating Leo before escaping from the area. The police were summoned and he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police investigations continue into the incident. Video maker Alive and Well says police. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF said there is no truth to social media claims that a man has been murdered in Maypen after he was heard commentating while he videotaped a major crime in the Clarendon capital. His video, which went viral, partly shows a group of heavily armed men robbing a supermarket at Guinea Tree in Maypen on Sunday morning, May 26. The JCF, through its corporate communications unit, said that it made checks with investigators probing the multi-million dollar robbery. The investigators, according to the JCF, visited the video maker and found that contrary to reports, he is still alive and very well. Female nurse allegedly killed by ambulance driver in Clarendon. A 55-year-old nurse was allegedly stabbed to death by an ambulance driver in Ace Clarendon on Wednesday, May 29. A release from the police's corporate communications unit, CCU, said the deceased, who is also an ambulance service contractor, has been identified as Nancy Samuels, a Cuban national of New Arbor Village, St. Catherine. Reports from the Maypin police are that about 3 p.m., Samuels was allegedly attacked by the ambulance driver, during which a knife was used to stab her. The police were summoned to the scene and she was taken to the hospital, where she was pronounced dead. The alleged attacker was taken into custody. His identity has been withheld pending further investigations by the police. Clarendon man to do five years of sexually exploiting 13-year-old girl. A Clarendon man, Aston Alcock, was sentenced to five years in prison in the Clarendon Circuit Court on Friday, May 24, for trafficking in persons and three years for having sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 years. The sentences are to run concurrently. On April 3, 2019, Alcock, who is of a Clarendon address, pleaded guilty to trafficking in persons and the sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 years. The allegations were that in January 2015, the mother of a 13-year-old girl of a Kingston address reported the child missing at the Denham Town Police Station and an investigation was launched into the child's whereabouts. The investigations revealed that the teenager was lured by a stranger to another parish where she was being sexually exploited. In April 2015, she met a police officer who questioned her and was able to ascertain where she lived and to obtain a telephone number for her mother who was contacted and reunited with the child. Further investigations into the matter led to the arrest of Alcock in Central Village, St. Catherine, in August 2015. On September 3, 2015, he was charged with the offenses of having sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 years and a later charged with the offense of trafficking in persons following a ruling from the Director of Public Prosecutions. The latest conviction was the sixth since the enactment of the Trafficking in Persons Prevention, Suppression and Punishment Act of 2007 and the first conviction since the law was amended in 2018 to allow for trial by a judge alone. Bujo gives a helping hand. The reggae singer through his four-month-old Bujo Banton Foundation donated food and personal care items to one of the care hostels under the Possibility Program located in Kingston. The occasion was on Labor Day last Thursday. Bujo sent his message to these young men, explaining that he knows what it is like to be in their shoes. He grew up in a poor community and understands what poverty is like and to be without certain needs. That's why you chose that facility, Rosemary Duncan, director of the Buja Banton Foundation, said. The entertainer was away on the gyna leg of the Long Walk to Freedom concert tour. 100% of the funds came from Buja. As promised, the proceeds from his concert would help those in need. So he took a percentage and invested the rest, said Duncan. 
The Possibility Program, which operates through the Ministry of Youth, was established in 2002 with the aim of getting at-risk youths in the corporate area of the streets. Targeted are children who wipe windscreens at the major intersections, who are provided with the necessary skills and emotional support needed for them to maximize their full potential. Duncan further stated that approximately 10 to 12 young men between the ages of 13 to 21 benefited from the program. The director explained why that facility was selected. A whole list of homes was presented and we found out that this one was most in need. They were in dire need of the help. The facility manager, Ruth OBC, also spoke with us and that is how it was arranged, she said. They were ecstatic, overjoyed. They got enough items that can last them for a year. Personal care items, toiletries, meat products, water and juices, a lot of stuff. We received a letter saying thanks from the directors and saying how they did not expect that many items. Opened on December 20, 2006, the care facility accommodates vulnerable boys and young men. It is a facility for boys who have various financial and social issues. When we went there, there was one we were told that they were trying to get into school. But this is where they live, said Duncan. The Bujabantan Foundation spoke of plans for the near future. We want to go into rural communities for the next project. I cannot say at this time when the next outreach will be, but we will definitely help rural communities and homes in need, she said. Tivoli mourns for Papa Hedy. They knew he was very ill, but the people of Tivoli Gardens also knew that their former member of parliament, Edward Philip George Siaga, was a fighter who had defied the odds several times in the past. So they planned a massive party to celebrate his 89th birthday in the hope that he would feel their love in his hospital bed in Miami, Florida and return to Jamaica to spend more time with them. But that was not to be. While the stage was being prepared and the musicians were turning up the sound boxes in the mid-afternoon, news came that Siaga had lost his fight with cancer, plunging much of his former Kingston Western constituency and in particular his baby Tivoli Gardens into mourning. In the 1960s, Siaga had transformed the slum dubbed Bakawal into a modern, low-income residential community that was christened Tivoli Gardens. And for 43 unbroken years, from 1962 until he retired in 2005, he served as member of parliament, mentor, and a father figure for scores of residents who dubbed him Papa Eddie. On Tuesday, those who could speak without tears recalled numerous special moments with their former MP, who was Prime Minister of Jamaica, from 1980 to 89. We knew that he was going, but it is still emotional to lose our leader, one woman who gave her name only as Annette, said inside the Tivoli Gardens Community Center. I remember his love, his kindness, the snorting of his nose because he was getting angry, and his love for children. Because I was a child when I got involved in this wonderful organization, the Jamaica Labor Party. Right now I have mixed feelings, added Annette, before the tears started to flow. Made her hurt me, sobbed another woman known as Rubber, before she started singing the JLP's anthem, Stand Up Jamaica, to cheer some her neighbors. Mr. Siaga was the best. From me a baby, me know Mr. Siaga, and me a 55 now, so you must know. Me grew up going to see my mother and father run behind Mr. Siaga, and me love him added rubber. Popular was Kingston businessman Salem Lazarus, fought back the tears as he indicated how much the death of Siaga had impacted him. I am deeply saddened. All my life he was like a godfather to me. My father and his relationship goes way back. My father happened to be godfather to his daughter Annabelle, so the relationship goes way back, said Lazarus. It is like an icon has passed. He was a man who you could say saved Jamaica from heading in the wrong direction. And it is just a loss to the community of Tivoli Gardens and the people of West Kingston. He had a passion for the Tivoli Gardens football team and that is what kept him alive all these years. No matter how he felt, he always had time to reach out to the footballers. But in all, the people of West Kingston were his love. But he has left it in good hands because Desmond McKenzie is here doing what he's doing. We have lost an icon and somebody that nobody could equal what he meant to West Kingston, added Lazarus. While declaring that he would not give in his urge to cry, Tivoli Gardens resident Mr. T constantly wiped his eyes as he shared his memories of Mr. Siaga. 
I lay down me lay down and hear the news and he come in like say me want a ball he said when you lose an icon like that the whole community sad and we know that the whole Jamaica mourn the former prime minister right now we just feel away in the section of the valley some called the building Miss Shaw had much to say about her 40 year association with Siaga even as she chided the people who had been critical of him while he was alive he is my prime minister even though Andrew Holness is the Prime Minister, I love Mr. Siaga to my heart. I know that him dead, me hear them talk the good things on the radio about Mr. Siaga. You don't have no Prime Minister like Mr. Siaga, she said. He must have the poor. Him heart go to poor people, especially this place that him built Tivoli Gardens. Him dead with Tivoli upon him heart. He's like half of Tivoli Gardens dead with Mr. Siaga. He said me go learn machine and bridging and me big woman stage with pay. And he make whole heap of young people get to learn a trade and get work, Shaw said. One time him say if he come to the test, he would have come and move into Tivoli Gardens and live with us because he love with to death. He did say when I die, I want to bury with my people in Maple Cemetery. But me know we never going to get that, declared Shaw. Long time Tivoli resident and former Siaga right hand Maisie Clark, better known as Miss Pinnis, heard about the death of her longtime friend after the rest of the community and declared that she was in mourning. Me must feel sad because that him build here and make me can live comfortable. Me know him from the 1950s and me mourning, said Clark. In the meantime, another Tivoli resident known as Babsy cleaned a bust of Siaga at the entrance to Tivoli as she has done for the past 10 years, while what was planned as a birthday party for Jamaica's fifth prime minister was converted into a celebration of the man who residents of the community will always remember and revere for what he did for them. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.